dust on these chairs. Ooh. You still smell. You're ugly. <laughs> Oh boy, I haven't said it like this in a while. This is weird. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. Getting some Corbin. I'm Rick. And folks, I need to grab some juicy content. It's so juicy. That's for you, Dad. That right there, we haven't been able to do that. No, we haven't. Because the freaking Skype doesn't let you go. Snap, snap, snap. No, 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 there's always a delay. Yeah. Anyways, as you probably have noticed by now, unless you skip the intro, you weirdo, uh, we are back in the same room. We're back in the saddle again. Unfortunately, this does not mean coronavirus is gone. <laughs> <coughs> Do not cough in my house. I will punch you. Uh, but uh, we are back together. 183. Um, also, this doesn't mean that you won't see us via Skype. Because True. one, I still have stuff that we haven't released that we filmed via oh, Skype. Oh, it's coming already the comments about, I thought you guys were sitting side by side. Why'd you go back? Also, um, the in coronavirus could get really bad again. <laughs> And they could true. shut us down again. And we might have to go another four months doing it the way we did. <laughs> we, <laughs> don't happen. we don't know. We don't know. But, or also, since we know now that we can do that, if there's like a late night release sometimes, I, I don't want them over here at one in the morning. I, I might do that. I often have a late night release. <laughs> Anyways. But we are back together so I can now see his stupid comments live. Yeah, and in person. And when I pass gas, we can share it. Gross. Uh, anyways. Wrong direction. Uh, today, we are doing a movie review. I want to be in a band that's called Wrong Direction. It's the anti One Direction. There's probably already a Wrong Direction. Probably so. My, my, We're doing a movie point. review? We are doing a movie I was review. supposed to watch a movie? It's the same funny joke we I'll say. I'll be back. Time. Let me know. How was it? These are the these are the quality quality comedy, comedy, comedy gems you when we're together. You know they do speed reading. I do speed movie watching. I just watched the whole movie right out there. That's really impressive. It was amazing. Anyways, here's my review. We're we done. are watching. We watched our second Canada film. Canada first being KGF mm -hmm. uh, or Kuf Kuguf Kuguf Kuguf. Um, this. Uh, a lot of people thought we were ignoring the Canada people. Well, you know, there are industries that just we've been intentionally, yes, I mean, ignoring as hard as we can. Anyways, this is called Il... <sighs> I'm not touching it because we Il did a corporatization. Which means told by the... Told by the rest? Told by the rest, I yeah, think, I think it, that's correct. what they said in the thing. Yeah. Uh, a journalist set out to uncover the truth behind an incident through the perspectives of different people, un, uh, unraveling how they and their lives are intertwined yes. with it. Directed by... If it would come and up. starring. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did not realize that. Yeah. I did not realize that. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, say his name? Rashid Chetty. Uh, who also was uh, starring in it as well. And then yep. there's obviously a ton of other people. Uh, in it, and I think he also wrote it. He so, did. This, this must like be a, a passion project for And him. he was the debutant, as they say. This was like his breakthrough, like, introducing him. This was his first at, film? At, that's how it was described when you look up the film. Mm -hmm. It gives you, I don't remember where I saw it, but it said, it described him as debutant. So I don't know if this was his directing debut, mm. or his writing directing debut, or his writing directing and acting debut all wrapped into one, but part of this was a debut for him. Interesting. Yes. I did not know that. Anyways, 100% spoiler review. Uh, just how we like to do them. Came out in 2014. If you haven't seen it, go watch it, come go back, it. and then you can be spoiled, you yep. little naughty boy. Yep. Or girl. Or... Or whatever you whatever like to be called. I don't, you know, if you, whatever pronoun you like. Uh, but... Rick, initial thoughts, go. Well, obviously, if you we need tell a paragraph, you, I know, now that like, you, now I can't that, have, no. I almost brought my laptop. Wow. 
Now, all now all the paragraphs are gone. One of the good no. things that came out of the You know what I'll pandemic. do? Next review, I'll do a paragraph and I'll read it off my phone. Because you know what? It's the 21st century. We wouldn't tell you to go watch it if we already didn't think it was worth watching. Mm -hmm. So I will say it is... Um, I only had one problem with the movie. Mm. Only one. Mm. I thought the direction, the cinematography, the score were fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the story was really interesting and I liked the twists. Mm -hmm. The only problem I had was that I found throughout challenges believing acting throughout. Mm. Um, nothing that was blaringly awful. Mm but just nothing other than a couple of moments for me that were riveting the rest of the time. This is worth watching as far as I'm concerned, just for the cinematography score and direction alone. Mm -hmm. That in and of itself for me was enough. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, um, I kind of, I probably didn't appreciate the story enough because so much of it was being carried with acting that wasn't believable for me a lot mm -hmm. of the time. That's it. We'll get into the acting. Uh, here in a minute. I, I actually really enjoyed this film. I think it's actually one that you could appreciate more if you watch it more. It's very Pulp Fiction-y. That's a great uh, comparison. Very it, Pulp fiction -y. It's very Robert Rodriguez in a lot yeah. of times, too. Yeah. Who I like. Uh, you, to pick up a lot of the nuances, I feel, obviously, you, you'd be able to... And also, I'm sure there's a bunch of nuances we missed culturally. culturally. That we can't help. It's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be that way for a few years. Until we get cultural and subs, since we have to read the subs. Um, it's just how it is. Yep. But I, I also agree. I thought the direction of this was really, really unique. That's one of the things I said midway through. I was like, this director has such a unique, unique. style. Like, he was entertaining me just with his direction in, in a lot of points. I was yes. like, oh, that's fun. It's a movie to watch just to enjoy this director. Yeah. Right. I was like, that's... I've never seen anybody do that in a film. That's really interesting. Yep. Like, and there was a lot of points in it that I, I thought that, like, there was, at certain points, like, when, at the beginning, he was fighting, mm -hmm. and, but it went very comic booky. Yep. And I was like, interesting. But that's, it, that, it was only like that a, two a or three times, times yeah, like in the, the film. The first black and white sequence that became almost comic book noir, and the bag is the only thing in color. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, when you get the hit, it's the psh, and the tooth comes out. Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, this is great. Yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, also, I was, I, the hold on, I just forgot what I was saying. I was hold on, I was gonna say something. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, um, yeah, I got it back. I found it. Um, the uh, I think a lot of that was also intentional obviously it was intentional but uh in terms of and that's one of the reasons that i i, I did notice some of the acting yeah. like you did as well but i'm wondering if some of it was intentional because it was being told through somebody else's perspective and so mm -hmm. this person's perspective what this person do was really heightened at certain points as a stylization yeah okay. because at certain points certain oh, actors that. were heightened but then at other times they were very, very grounded. Well, I'll tell you a moment for me mm -hmm. that was the most believable and I was the most engaged was whoever he got to play. Um, when I say he, I'm obviously referring to Rakshit Shetty. So he played Richie. Mm -hmm. His the other his counterpoint, his friend he hadn't seen who hadn't seen his mom in 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Their reunion. Yeah. Her response to seeing him for the first time when they did the elaborate. I was, I said like the three mom. times, I yeah. said three times beautiful work watching uh -huh. her reunite with her son and got emotional watching her because I believed I was watching this mom reunite with her son. Yeah, she did really, really well. Uh, I liked her a lot. Um, I like, like the biggest star of this, it's kind of similar to Quentin Tarantino films, especially earlier Quentin Tarantino films. It's, it's the director's style that mm -hmm. really steals the show. In this and also his choice of score a lot of times was very Quentin-esque mm -hmm. because at certain points you're like that's a v really unique interesting song for this right. moment in time right and then also a certain point like when the kids just started singing into a musical number the yeah uh, pepper the pepper pepper, pepper, medicine, pepper yes was pepper medicine thing. thing was a great number a great number but it was like so random right but there was nothing else in the film that was like that and then they decided to insert that in there, I was like, that's so interesting. <laughs> totally. 
totally the way he, agree. The way this direct, I loved how he did it. It, it kept you uh, you engaged uh, in, in parts that you might, if, if it was a normal type film, that you might be um, getting bored at some time. Mm -hmm. He kept you engaged with these different stylistics with cinematography or his scores mm -hmm. or the way, like, it's just so much interesting in this. And then uh, I also want to talk about the end. What do you think actually happened? Well, that's, a, that's what's great about the movie, is yeah. that it leaves it up to you to determine because you have the different perf the different vantage points of what happened. Mm -hmm. I had, I honestly, I don't know. I really, that's one of my favorite things about it at the end is that it really doesn't allow you definitively to say one way or the other. Anybody could say any number of things and you'd be like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's what happened. Yeah. Um, and the, you mentioned the kids. Democracy. I thought that kid who played Democracy yeah, was great. great. But what did you did you have a particular thing you thought was like this is no, this is what happened? It's actually I, I wanted to watch it again almost um, just to because it's one of those films that you know that they put little hints mm -hmm. in the right. films to tell to you tell you exactly what happened. Correct. Was she dead the whole time? I loved that aspect of it where throughout the film we get the same moment told from a different perspective. Uh -huh. So like when when he shows up to the dock, to the boat, and democracy comes out, and I forgot the character's name, he turns to him and he, he just talks to him for a minute. When you see that, you first see that from Rakshetty's position, from, from Richie's position. Mm -hmm. But then like an hour later into the film, we revisit that moment from that guy's perspective and democracy was down under the boat. Mm -hmm. I, he did that at least four or five times. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that was the whole, that's why the journalist was there at the beginning to tell these different perspectives and then her basically thing was to let the reader decide yeah. what they think happened. Yeah, I, I, don't, I was trying to figure it out because obviously I, I didn't know if the girl, the guy who shot uh, Richie, uh, the girl that he kept watching and following mm -hmm. if she was actually alive this entire time or if she was dead the whole time yeah that's possible because he never actually talked to her he never actually he, talked he to her watching her this entire right. time there were other people who that's he a... saw interact with them um and i'm guessing those were her glasses because that's why he had two glasses um but like there was a time because the the guy who um was crazy right mm-hmm and kept hearing the crows. Right. She's a brother to her. Correct. But that scene after he got beat up and she came in, he went inside, he sh shut the door, and she wasn't allowed in at that point. Uh, and so she didn't actually get to follow him. Interesting point. Uh, and so we don't, I don't know if she was dead the whole time or like that might have not even mattered. He was just imagining it. Right. Which is one thing that you don't know of like well, actually what happened because right. you don't know if Richie actually shot that guy mm -hmm. because this guy is just seeing things. He's seeing stuff because he's definitely out there. Yeah. Yeah. So what are what are we actually seeing? Yeah. Yeah. And so I was <laughs> I almost wanted to I was like, I know and I don't know if I'd be able to catch it if I if I gave it a second viewing, but it, it I would watch it again just to figure out that stuff. It's one of those films that it makes you want to watch it multiple times yeah. because you, you want to know, because you know, they, they, I'm, a good director obviously puts little hints in that you don't yeah. catch. Oh, I guarantee, I guarantee he's the kind of director that when you've seen a film three or four times, you're going to go, oh wow, I didn't realize that. That yeah. was really smart. Yeah. Um, the acting thing, here's a question. So I'm going to get high, I'm going to get really deeply nuanced about what I observed in the actors, mm -hmm. which is a presupposition. We'd have to ask the actors, but I think I know what I was observing. But you brought up the possibility yeah. of it being stylized. I'm wondering if at certain points if it was stylized because other people were telling their, their perspective of that scenario. Could have been. That's Here's what I thought. I thought two things were coming into play. I thought one was just lack of experience, which I, 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 you can't blame actors it's in possible. some It's yeah. possible. Yeah. And the lack of experience, the main thing I was seeing, and I'm getting really picky about the craft of acting, and if you were coaching actors, you would notice something and tell them to make this adjustment. If I was telling them to make adjustments, tell me if you saw this or this is just me. It was uh, oftentimes in a scene, I didn't believe they had been somewhere before the scene started. I saw, like she was talking to the guy sitting in a chair. I saw that actor had found his spot in place and he was doing his scene from the chair versus he was actually being in the moment and had already himself pre-constructed his backstory so that he had come from somewhere, which is one of the little nuances of the greatest actors that you can pick up on is 
It's mm -hmm. a change to a scene and you know that there was probably, that could have been done on a different day. And they're not just carrying the continuity of the script, but they're carrying over something maybe that wasn't even written so that they know when I walk into this room, I wasn't just walking into this room, I came from somewhere and that energy from that came into the room. That's the kind of thing I noticed throughout. Yeah. Oh, I noticed some of the acting too, for sure. Um, and, and it was, like you said, nobody was awful. And nobody was very bad. I thought it was really, really good, but there were multiple times, even with most of the actors, that I noticed little things. And that's why I think each scene, and that could even explain why you're thinking that, is that it's told from one person's perspective, though, telling this. Could be. And, and the director is setting it up like somebody is telling you this scene that happened that was from right. this perspective. Right, right, right. And I don't know if that's the case. But if it was, it could be. I don't know. No idea. Yeah. Uh, I, you'd have to ask the director that. Um, but yeah, I, it's... We'd like to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're a phenomenal director. There's so much Great about director. this film that I, I, I really, really enjoyed. Um, something about Canada films I don't like is uh, the fact that they put uh, alcohol and smoking oh. censored every single time. Well, here's... And okay. that's not just Canada, it's multiple things. It's, Correct. It's not with this film, I'm just as a broad statement. No, but I got... The fact that they can't say cuss words. <laughs> Makes me upset. Uh, and this just goes to sensor boards. And I know each of you has different sensor boards. All sensor boards. They do, but the primary censorship that happens in Indian film, this is the difference between the rating system in America and the censorship board in, which also does the rating system in India, mm -hmm. is that the rating system, the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America here, does a rating system. They're a trade, they're, they're an organization. They're a private organization, whereas the censorship board is government. So what you have is government censorship. Mm -hmm. And I think it's actually one of the reasons why. I could be wrong, I'm speculating. It may be one of the reasons why it's so difficult for a film from India to be paid attention to by the Academy. Because number one, you say this all the time and I'm with you in the same soapbox. You can't censor to art. Yeah, ever. And because of it, I think there's a twofold reason the Academy would look at something and go, you know what, this isn't full-fledged artistry because it's being held back. And we don't want to bring light to something right now if we feel like the film itself and the artistry is being handcuffed by government censorship. Yeah. So that's possible. The other thing I wanted to bring up about this film, this is apparently, correct me if I'm wrong, the first Canada film to be filmed completely full sound, not sync sound. Oh, it was filmed full sound. It was, yeah, I could tell. Yeah. But it's the first in this industry that the entirety of the that? film it was online when I was oh, researching. Really? So I don't remember if I read it in the review from Times of India or something, yeah. but it was the first film from this industry that the totality of the film, none of it was shot dub sound, where there's no sound crew on set and they dub it all in post. This was all live recording sound. Mm. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. You know, we don't like that. Yep, when people do that. I, yep. <laughs> I just... It could, <laughs> it's annoying. So, but anyways, <laughs> anyways, that's not about this film. <laughs> no, I'm glad they didn't do that with this film because I, I, I really, really enjoyed this film. And this is something that I'm sure you guys could shed a lot of light on what we missed on oh, certain yeah. parts and what was going on. I'm sure most of you have saw this film multiple, multiple times because it's like it, it went along with at the his story that he kept telling the, the about the Cuban man and the guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he he died that exact way. Mm -hmm. He's like, why did I just why did you just shoot me? I'm confused. Right. And so he became that man, but we don't fully know why a guy who was infected with a girl outside of maybe he knew that somebody would shoot him. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of to be questions. Girl in the end, which I'm assuming is what that was. That she, they finally got reunited, and he could go up to her finally. Right. But I think either rewatching it would would give us insights. And I know Stupid Babies would be able to give us insights in terms of what we may have missed in that regard. Especially, no matter how good the subbing is, we know we're always going to get something lost in translation with script. Yeah. Which is why I'm always hesitant. I'll talk about story, but I, I'll very rarely criticize screenplay. Because it, what, you can't. Yeah. It, it's hard to... You can't criticize screenplay when you, you, you don't know the original language. Anyways, so, well... Enjoy that movie. film. Go watch it. I'm hoping you're not here if you haven't watched it because there's a lot it's of spoilers. It's all been ruined for you. Uh, <laughs> Everybody dies in the end. <laughs> it's true. Uh, but let us know which next Canada film we should watch. Uh, next down below. And upvote it so I can see it. Come here. Come here.
Did I have a temperature? They're all good. You know what I did? I did this, and then I didn't look at the reader. I turned and looked at it this way. <laughs> Da din din 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 da din din